Hello everyone, Mr. Science Mover here. Having watched and participated in the Back for Blood streams on this channel with my fellow Smoover Cam, we've gotten a lot of feedback from people saying that our Back for Blood speedrun tutorials have inspired them to start speedrunning themselves, and I think it's great that people are finding their way to speedrunning a game they love. That being said, I wanted to make something similar that can apply to any game, not just Back for Blood. Today I'll be giving an introduction to speedrunning in general, how to pick a game, how to learn to run the game, and other tips and tricks that you'll pick up along the way. Step 1. The first thing we need is a game to speedrun. There are many different ways to pick a game, and the method you pick will be dependent on your goals. If what you're looking for is a game you've never played, but has a lot of competition, the best place to look would be speedrun.com. This is where every individual game hosts its speedrun leaderboard. Before we know what game we want to run though, we can head over to the Games tab. This will allow us to sort the games by most active. This will give you the games with the most people currently submitting runs, so you'll always have competition. Feel free to scroll down this page and pick a game that seems good for you. The second method is if you have a game in mind that you've played already, but want to spice things up and run it officially. In that case, there's a search bar at the top of the screen that will direct you to that game's leaderboard. The benefit of using speedrun.com is that you'll always have a baseline for how good your time can get. For my video today, I used a combination of these two really. I sorted by most active and scrolled down until I found a game I had played before and felt like running. That game for me was Super Smash Bros Ultimate. Starting to speedrun a game can be daunting, especially if you haven't played the game before, or if the world record uses tricks and skips you haven't seen before. That leads us into step 2. Learn the rules. Before you get to actually running your game, if you ever want to actually submit your run to the leaderboards, you'll have to abide by the community rules set for your specific game. There are a few key things that every rules section will tell you when the timer starts, and when the timer stops. Some games start on player control, where others start on console power on. Some games end on last boss hit, where others end at the credits. It's important to know these things ahead of time so that you can not only accurately time your runs after the fact, but also so that you don't do something silly like leaving the timer running on the title screen. Depending on your game, there may also be extra stipulations and rules you have to follow in order for your run to be valid in a given category. Some games will only have one category, which means there's only one rule set for that game, whereas others, like the game I've chosen for myself, will have an absurdly long list of categories. Before you start running, you'll have to choose what category you'll be competing in. This will dictate what rule set you'll need to follow during your runs. For example, today I'll be running Super Smash Bros Ultimate, but specifically, I've chosen the Sora 0.0, .0 Classic Mode run. This descriptor defines my rule set. My timer starts when I select a Let's Go on a 0.0, .0 difficulty Sora Classic Mode run, and my timer ends on the last hit of the final boss. Some games have rules that are a bit more nuanced, like measuring in-game time versus real time. If you ever have questions about the rules of the run you're going to attempt, it's always better to ask in advance rather than invalidate a good run afterwards. Make sure to check the game's Discord and Forum sections for previous rules clarifications. Now that we know our game, our category, and subsequently our rule set, it's finally time for step 3, learn the run. The true meaning of this sentiment is really up to you and again dependent on your goals, but whether you want to go for world record or not, you'll need to start somewhere. I tend to like to start at about halfway down the leaderboard. The players hovering around this range tend to have runs that are relatively fast compared to a casual player, but don't use any crazy techniques that you can't learn in a few minutes of practice. You might already have preconceived notions about how a run in your game might go, but watching someone else's submitted run is always a good first step, as there's a chance you might learn something obvious that you hadn't thought of before. For my session today in learning Sora, I'm already familiar with the run itself, so I started by watching the world record to see how things can go faster than I've done myself. This run can be divided into 7 parts, which I'll leave as splits in my live split timer. If you don't know how to use a live split, that's perfectly fine for speedrunning. You can always run a normal timer on your phone or Google. Ultimately, the timer on screen is for you to know your own pace, and you'll have to retime your runs after the fact anyway, since starting and stopping a timer frame perfectly every time is impossible. You'll also want to make sure that your run is being recorded in its entirety. That means both recording the entire screen, or anything important, and recording from before the timer starts until after the timer ends. A good tool to use for recording is OBS, which can be downloaded for free, but if you're running a game on console like Super Smash Bros Ultimate, it's perfectly fine to point a camera at your TV. These videos are not expected to be movie quality, they're just to prove you did what you said you did. Back to the run at hand, I'm going to be studying all 7 parts in order and trying to understand the basic intuition behind each of them. For split 1, we'll be fighting two Shadow Links. 
For this fight, it seems to be very important that we make sure to hit both links with every hit, as splitting them up will lose time. Makes sense. He seems to use down tilt to set up for a handful of smash attacks, which are the fastest way of dealing damage in this game. Pretty self-explanatory why this is the fastest, but up smash would probably not be my first thought, so good to be watching this before starting. Split 2 takes us into a fight against a bunch of game and watches. The trick here is that only 4 enemies will ever be on the screen at the same time, so you really want to be killing off those small guys as fast as possible to get the bigger ones out quicker. Again, up smash is the move of choice, and you make sure that each of them hits as many enemies as possible. Looks like it actually takes out the small game and watches in one hit, so that's nice. Something also worth noting is he sends the last game and watch off the top of the screen, which saves about 6 seconds given that Sora's stamina kill animation doesn't play. Something minor that might not be explicitly explained, but make sure to compare your runs to others and see where you're losing time. Split 3 seems pretty straightforward. Throw the cloud forwards and dash into him to take him out just like that. Easy enough. Split 4 has us face off against 3 Robins. A bunch more up smashing here, but I noticed that he waits a bit at the beginning before starting so that he can attack all of them at once, sacrificing a bit of time for a bigger time save later on. Again in Split 5 we have an up smash fest against a big Ganondorf. Notably, in this fight, the world record loses some time to getting hit by the Ganon's up tilt. As I'll learn in a bit, because the actions of these enemies are somewhat random, I'll often lose time simply because the AI decided to jump over my head or swing as I was setting up. Randomness, or as we tend to call it in speedrunning, RNG for random number generator, tends to appear in many games. It's a tactic game designers will use to ensure that their game is different every time it's played, whether that be crafting a unique player experience between players, or making the game more replayable for a single player. Unfortunately, this is the antithesis of speedrunning, in which runners try to perfect their strategies over time. RNG necessarily means that strategies will have to change on the fly. Some games, particularly retro games, can expose their RNG patterns to the player ahead of time, giving speedrunners a chance to plan ahead. However, Smash Bros Ultimate is not one of those games, so it's something I'll have to deal with. Split 6 brings us up against a Metal Sora, which has the added benefit of being heavy, allowing us to spam up smash even faster. Perfect. Finally, the last split, after killing ourselves in the bonus game, involves fighting Master and Crazy Hand. This fight is probably the most RNG heavy fight in the run as the hands have a massive pool of moves to draw from, some of which make them unable to be hit. As the run ends when their health hits zero, you can see how the RNG of this fight can determine the fate of a run. Despite getting sucked into a black hole, the world record barges through with some up smashes and down smashes to take home a time of 3 minutes and 10 seconds. Looking at the full leaderboard again, there are 13 runs submitted and 6 of them are below 4 minutes, so this seems to be a good target time for me by the end of this session. I'd be happy to take 7th out of 14, so that will be my goal. Finally, we'll head into step 4, the run itself. Here I have my layout set up so that I can record both the gameplay and my timer. We'll head into the game and just get started. I like to start off new runs with a baseline run through so that I can set a personal best as a comparison for future runs. My first run ended with a time of 5.01, with a lot of clear time saves. Much of this had to do with me remembering to hit multiple enemies at the same time, and just good RNG in general. Once I got the hang of the strategies I mentioned earlier, it was just a matter of grinding out a good time. Here are some of the highlights. Let's roll the montage. And, after all that grind, I finally managed to get a time of 3.55 and achieve my goal of a sub 4 minute run. Hopefully this gave you some insight into how I go about choosing and learning a speedrun. 
don't forget that speedrunning is supposed to be a fun hobby, so if you find that a game is giving you more trouble than it's worth, always feel free to choose another one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.